Hello and welcome to Clever Paws. The Animal Artist Collective was created by Jennifer Charlie from Jennifer Charlie Art and Denise from In Liquid Color in March of 2018. Every other month, their members get together and create animal focused art based around a specific biome chosen by you. The members also sell their originals to raise money for charity. I will leave a link to the Facebook page of the collective where you can vote on the next theme and check out the members of the collective. I am not a member myself but I like the challenge that comes with it and of course I like animals. So I try to get a piece done each time. As usual, a list of all the materials used can be found in the description below. Chosen biome was tempered forest. Inspired by Maria the Houselings, I picked the Eurasian lynx, a medium sized wildcat, and the third largest predator in Europe. Once quite common all over Europe, especially Central Europe, today populations are relatively small and isolated, and in many cases, the lynx was once dominated later reintroduced in the Texas Bank that is National Park. We introduced some populations at this point numbering no more than 200 animals, while the white population, especially in Scandinavia and the Baltic, is quite substantial stable. Like all cats, lynxes are mandatory carnivores which means that especially livestock farmers didn't like them. Of the four species that make up the genus lynx, the Eurasian lynx is the largest. The other three are Canada lynx, Iberian lynx and bobcat. The Eurasian lynx grows to a size of 3 to 4 foot in length and 2 to 2 and a half foot in height standing. They consume between 1 and 2 kg, that's 2 to 4 pounds, of meat each day and will hunt anything from rabbits to squirrels to deer. Lynxes are mainly known for stalking their prey, but if the location is suitable, they will also ambush other animals. Its main natural predator is the wolf in Europe and in places like Siberia also tigers. Bears are more a competition for prey and will take a kill of a lynx before it will eat its fill. I have seen lynxes once myself in the Bavarian Forest Nature Reserve where there is a reintroduced population of around 150 to 160 animals today. Maya the house lynx, one of my many cats, is very much responsible for me having chosen the Eurasian lynx for this installment of the Animal Artist Collective. She came to us last summer via the SPCA when the litter was found in a bucket in someone's attic in town. Your guess is as good as mine, but chances are that something happened to the mother when she went out hunting and the people living in the house were the price of the baby later. She has almost things like coloring and the tufty ears as well as the double coat being shortened. There were three surviving things in the litter. One was normal size or maybe even a bit of a small size, but Maya and one brother were extremely large from the time we got them. I did keep saying, if it wasn't for the second brother, I would be questioning the species I am raising. She is now a bit over one year old and already as big as a smaller house cat and she has at least one year of growing left, three if the forest cat ancestry gains the upper hand. With the heat wave we had here in Ireland and all over Europe, she actually decided that going out wasn't so bad after all. 
when I first let them outside to explore more of the property than just the house last October, the brothers, who have since been adopted, embraced it. Maya lasted two minutes, then she looked at me. Well, that's quite enough of this now. Can I go back inside? Hence, she became known as the Houselings. Also, her goal in life is to melt into my shoulder, which may become a bit impractical if she keeps up the growing like this. Let's talk about the piece I'm working on for a little bit. I specifically stayed away from using the ink outlines I am so much in love with. Over several painting sessions, I put down washes for the background, bit by bit creating a dark and dense forest with some boulders in the foreground for a visual starting point. Using all earthy colors is not an unusual color palette for me to go for, but I'm glad I did and the piece really wouldn't have worked otherwise. When it came time to paint the animals, I used some black and a lot of yellow ochre to lay down a base coat of color and define the shapes a bit more. I also used some reddish yellow to show their summer coat. When the paint was dry, I used colored pencil to add texture to the fur and deepen the colors. I also gave some outlines to the trees with the polychromos at this point to give the impression of bar. This also allowed me to fill in any gaps I might have left with the watercolors earlier. I did find in the end that the two lenses were a bit too bright and yellow so, and I added a layer of greenish brown from the pro color range to dull it down a bit. Overall, I like the piece a lot. I like working on it. I like how it turned out. The only thing that really needs a lot more practice is to own light colored fur. But these things one only finds out about when attempting to do it for the first time. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I shall see you next week.